Recently, NVIDIA and its board partners released driver and BIOS updates for their RTX 30 series GPUs to allow support for Microsoft's resizable bar technology. So how much does this new tech boost gaming performance by? Well, that's what we're here to find out. Hey, if you enjoy content like this, drop a like, make sure to subscribe, and smash that bell so you never miss another video. Hey, what is going on guys? Danny here. Welcome back to the channel and I hope you've all been doing well. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at a handful of gaming benchmarks which I conducted on my test system to see how much performance a user can gain by enabling resizable bar for their Nvidia RTX 30 series graphics card. To give you guys a brief summary on what resizable bar is, also known as smart access memory, it essentially allows the CPU to have full direct and efficient access to the GPU's entire frame buffer, whereas before it was typical for a discrete GPU to only have a small portion of its frame buffer exposed over the PCI bus. For compatibility with 32-bit operating systems, discrete GPUs typically claim a 256 megabyte I.O. region for their entire frame buffer, and this is how typical firmware configures them. NVIDIA claims that with the ever-growing size of modern game assets, this results in a lot of transfers. Using resizable bar assets can instead be requested as needed and sent in full, so the CPU can efficiently access the entire frame buffer rather than the 256 megabyte megabyte banks at a time. And if multiple requests are made, transfers can occur concurrently rather than queuing them, and this can alleviate those system bottlenecks. That was just a short, quick explanation of what this tech's objective is, but if you guys want to read about it in full detail, I'll have some useful links down below in the video description. So the CPU all of a sudden has access to my RTX 3090's full fat 24GB GDDR6X memory buffer. And now this is totally going to boost my gaming performance and I can finally play Cyberpunk at 8K with ray tracing. Well, not so fast. While in theory it sounds very beneficial, there's still a lot of work that needs to be done from the development side of things and the way games are coded. Don't expect that by just enabling resizable bar, you'll gain immense performance improvements. But that's what we're trying to test here, just how much can you boost your gaming performance with this new tech. If you want to enable and take advantage of resizable bar, there are a few prerequisites that you'll have to meet. For starters, only a few select CPU generations support it. From AMD, initially the Ryzen 5000 series only supported the tech, but now now the 3000 series also support it. As for the AMD chipsets, the X570, B550, X470, and B450 chipset motherboards will support this tech. For Intel, only their 10th and 11th gen CPUs will allow support for resizable bar, and their 400 and 500 series chipset motherboards will work. Those are just the hardware requirements. You'll want to make sure you're using the latest NVIDIA drivers, which would be 465.89 at the time of making this video. You'll also want to download and update your GPU vBIOS. For NVIDIA's Founders Edition cards, they have a tool on their website which you can download, and if you have an aftermarket AIB card like the Asus Strix or MSI Gaming X Trio, then you'll want to head on over to the vendor's website and download the tool from there. In addition to that, you'll also want to download the latest BIOS for your motherboard which supports the feature, flash it accordingly, and then enable it within the BIOS. In the NVIDIA control panel, you'll be able to verify if resizable bar is enabled and working, if it'll say yes in the information pertaining to it. To test the performance benefits of resizable bar, I benchmarked 20 games that had been released over the last few years at three common resolutions, 1080p, 1440p, and 4K. The test system used has the following specs. For the CPU, we've got an AMD Ryzen 7 5800X, cooled by a Corsair H159 Pro XT 200mm all-in-one liquid cooler. For the RAM, we've got four 8GB sticks of Patriot Viper steel memory, clocked at 3600 MHz with CL14 tune timings. The motherboard is an MSI X570 Unify using the latest Agiza 1.2.0.1 BIOS, which has support for resizable bar. The GPU is an Asus ROG Strix RTX 3090. For our storage device, we're using a 2TB Samsung 970 EVO Plus NVMe SSD. Powering all the components is an EVGA 1000G3 80 Plus Gold Certified Power Supply. Now that we've gotten all the specs out of the way, it's time we looked at the gaming benchmarks. I won't be going over all 20 games, we're only going to be looking at a handful of benchmarks, and we're going to get through them pretty quickly as the results from the first few benchmarks will give you guys a good idea on the performance changes from Resizable Bar. Also keep in mind we're not here to discuss raw FPS numbers, but we're more focused on the relative differences. Starting us off is Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Here you guys can see that performance across all three resolutions is practically identical. With Resizable Bar enabled, performance doesn't change at all 
all. These results are basically within margin of error. The next game on our list is Forza Horizon 4. Here we do see a larger performance gain when using bar. At 1080p, the performance doesn't improve by much. Then at 1440p, we see a 2% increase for the average FPS, though we do see the 1% lows decrease by the same amount. Still nothing what I'd call substantial or noticeable. However, at 4K, we see that the average FPS increases by 5%, and the 1% lows see a whopping 10% increase, so that's a considerable increase in performance. Next up is Gears 5, and this is another title which shows us that performance barely improves across all three resolutions. With Horizon Zero Dawn, it's pretty much the same story. The results seen here show us that the user would see no difference between not using resizable bar and having it enabled. Moving on, and Borderlands 3 shows us some interesting results. At 4K, the performance gains are pretty much the same. However, at 1080p and 1440p, we can see some noteworthy performance uplifts, a 7% and 8% performance improvement respectively. Though do take note that at 1080p, the, with resizable bar enabled, the 1% lows also drop by 16%, which might be noticeable to the user. At 1080p, bar introduces more variance in overall FPS. Assassin's Creed Valhalla shows us performance gains all around for the average FPS. We're looking at a 4% improvement at 1080p, 7% at 1440p, and 10% of 4K. So it seems to go higher as we increase the resolution, the performance gains from resizable bar become more profound. Therefore, this is a game which seems to be benefiting from the tech to a certain degree. Next up is Control, and here we're pretty much seeing identical performance across all three resolutions when comparing no bar and with bar enabled. Just like Control, Red Dead Redemption 2 exhibits the same kind of behavior. Resizable bar does absolutely nothing for performance as it remains the same. Cyberpunk 2077 is the next game and this is a game where I thought, you know, I would have seen some performance improvements considering how detailed the entire world is, but unfortunately resizable bar does nothing for us in this title. There's basically no difference from having bar enabled and having no bar. The last game we'll take a look at, though I'm sure you guys get the point by now, is CSGO. The results show us that the performance differences are aren't really anything too drastic, it's more of the same of what we saw from the previous titles. However, in CSGO, what is consistent is the fact that there is performance regression when using resizable bar. Our biggest loss is at 1440p where we go from 752 FPS to 741, though I'm sure at that point nobody would be crying about a loss like that, so it's really a non-issue, but just thought I'd point that out. Alright, so now that we've gone over all the benchmarks, let's take a look at the 20 game average. Here we can see that, you know, across all three resolutions, performance barely changes, and this shouldn't come as a surprise at this point. We're talking about mere 1% changes, which will not be noticeable at all to the user. When we take a look at the game by game breakdown, at 1080p, we can see the games that benefited the most were titles like Borderlands 3, Hitman 2, and AC Valhalla, and there were some games that showed performance regression, such as Far Cry 5 and Watch Dogs Legion. But like I said, these performance differences are so small that the user wouldn't notice them. The story is pretty much the same at 1440p. Here you guys can see that by doing a game by game breakdown, there are some games that benefit from resizable bar, but it's nothing substantial and there is a bit of performance regression in some titles. And even at 4K, we're completely GPU bound. There was only one game at 4K which showed us double digit percentage gains and that was AC Valhalla, but the majority were in the single digits. So again, it's nothing substantial. The bottom line is this, if you aren't able to take advantage of resizable bar right now because you don't have the hardware to support it, I wouldn't really worry about it too much as you're not really missing out on, on a whole lot of performance. Does this mean that resizable bar is pointless? No, it does not. All this tells us is that as of now, there aren't really a whole lot of titles that you know, properly take advantage of this feature. It's the same as how it was when Microsoft updated Windows with support for hardware accelerated GPU scheduling. While in theory it sounds like it'll boost performance, the real world results show us that it barely did. However, with these new features available to us and for developers to work with, it only gives them more tools to work with and take game optimization to the next level. In the future, I expect to see the full merits of these new features and we should hopefully see more substantial performance boosts. At the end of the day, these are free features that allow for more performance, so I'll take it. As of now, whether you want to enable resizable bar or leave it disabled, the choice is yours. There's no right or wrong configuration here just yet. I hope you guys found this video to be informative and helpful. Let me know your thoughts down below. Check out the video description on ways to support the channel and for my other videos. If you guys are interested in more content like this, then make sure you're subscribed. Thanks for watching, take care, and I'll see you guys in the next one.